since we're still looking for Billy Kerr, if you look on the big screen, you might see a picture of him. Please, everybody, shout out Billy Kerr. Thank you so much. Guys, I am going to introduce the next speaker, and then I'm have to... Are, are you... What, what are you doing down there? You interfering with my coil? Oh, I, please! Everybody look down and pick up the rubbish. We don't want them on Twitter saying we made a mess in this park. Do not let them have a go at us. Pick up every single bit of rubbish so they have nothing to say about us. Let me hear you cheer that. Like we do with all the policies, we have to pick up the shit. Guys, after this speaker, I'm going to introduce then I need to go home. You've been awesome, but please give a big cheer for Tommy Sheridan! Brothers and sisters, what an absolutely fabulous day we've had today. I know we're all soaked, but our spirits are not dampened. It gives us more resilience to march through the rain today. A march that has assembled probably the biggest demonstration in Scotland's history. That's what you've done today. And you know, yesterday there was a story which brought everything into focus for me about why we need our independence. A story that some of you might have read about or heard about. There's been a consultation conducted by the Scottish Government and 16,000 Scots have been part of this consultation and it's been about the sale of fireworks and the government has been concerned because ambulance crews, firefighters, domestic pets have been attacked by the misuse of fireworks and the government's been asked to do something about it because emergency service workers are there to do a job not to be attacked by fireworks on the 5th of November. And this consultation, 83% said they want the public sale of fireworks banned so that only official firework displays take place. And I thought, well, if 83% support that, then it must be not a bad idea. And then the Scottish Government had to admit they're powerless. The sale of fireworks is reserved to Westminster. We've got a Scottish Parliament that's been there since 1999. They have passed 231 acts of the Scottish Parliament, some of them very important, like free personal care for the elderly, like retaining no tuition fees here in Scotland, like free prescriptions here in Scotland. Very important. There are other measures which are important, but maybe not quite as important as other measures. We've passed bills on dog fouling. We've passed measures on high hedges. And that's the crux of the matter. We've got the power to regulate high hedges, but we can't determine that we can ban the bloody sale of fireworks. We are a we pretended parliament. It's almost like parental guidance 
There should be a PG notice out of the Parliament. Brothers and sisters, we've had enough. We've had enough of a parental guidance Parliament. We want an adult Parliament to take our own decisions. We don't just want to take decisions on high hedges or dog fouling. We want to take decisions to banish poverty and inequality. That's what we want to do. Independence for us can never be the end of the journey. Independence for us has to be the start of the journey. The journey, brothers and sisters, to create a fairer Scotland, a more equal Scotland, a Scotland that welcomes refugees, a Scotland that hands out friendship, not a fist of fury, to those who are fleeing the bombs that the Western powers are dropping upon them. A Scotland that says loud and clear, we think hospitals and schools and children are much more important than illegal, immoral weapons of mass destruction. I'll finish, brothers and sisters, by making an appeal to the de facto leadership of the independence movement in a political sense. We're the grassroots, we're the heart of the movement, but the political leadership have got a job to do. We gave them a mandate three and a half years ago. There are some people in England and Wales who I find it difficult sometimes because there's different views on Brexit and the European Union. And I find it difficult sometimes when I listen to the voices in England and Wales, not the bigoted ones, not the racist ones, but the ones who said that they voted for something three years ago that still hasn't happened. And I say to myself, we voted for something three years ago that still hasn't happened. My appeal to the SNP, I know you've got a hard job. I know it's difficult running Scotland. And it's going to get harder. It's going to get harder with Johnson and his right-wing group of bigots and racists and reactionaries. I say to the SNP leadership, please, either use the mandate or fight the election in November on a clear manifesto commitment. If you win the election, then you negotiate our independence. That's what you should be doing. No more ifs, buts and maybes. We've walked far too far far too many times to be let down again. Please, you've got the backing. You've got the faith of the Scottish people. Don't let us down again. Use the mandate. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thomas Sheridan, a man that we all know and love.